picturing all of this being used against me <laughs> in a later time. And it's like, I'm not going to prison. It's TMZ with the fucking jail plug. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's all I'm picturing. This is like on the news of us being like, we don't do anything prison worthy. <laughs> Somehow we killed like 14 people. It's going to be fucking awful. Oh my God. <sighs> What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Playboy Cup brought to you by Pirate Water P Dubs, the best drink in the game. We've got five delicious flavors. Our newest flavor is Wicked Tea. It's a non carbonated version. Um, it's delicious. It's a 10% ABV malt beverage. It's under $2. Keeps your wallet happy, gets the job done, makes everyone that drinks it have a good time, have a blast. So it's the drink of the fall. If you haven't tried the Wicked Tea yet, make sure to check it out. It's the newest flavor. Uh, you can go to drinkpiratewater.com to find it near you. You can order it on GoPuff. Or you can get it at Walmart. Or and tag us at Drink Pirate Water so we can repost your stories of you sipping on what we're sipping on. Let's get into the episode. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Plan Brie Uncut. How are we doing? How are we feeling? I'm feeling actually electric. I didn't really drink this much this weekend, so I feel really very good. Oh, my gosh. I'm kind of on the opposite um, <laughs> wave. Never Ooh. on the same page, friend. You were on... Um, you were on the road, so you weren't getting too wasted. No, not getting wasted. Not getting. You would wasted. think the road life would would treat you as a wasted wasted away again in Margaritaville, but no, not particularly. Well, if Whitney was a wasted lady, then it would, but she's not a wasted lady. No, she's strong. She's stronger than us, and she doesn't get wasted. And uh, you know what? You just have to kind of do what Whitney does because she's the boss. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and I'm not so going to sneak drinks behind anyone's back. And you're not going to get wasted when everyone's sober because probably people will think you have a problem. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, so seriously, you're going to stay sober? Yeah. Well, you know, I had a couple after I went up. You know, it's neither here nor there. Actually, after the South Carolina show, we're walking out and Whitney's like, we have a four-hour car ride. Do you want to take a shot? And I was like, do you want to take a shot? I was like, Whoa. is this a test? <laughs> and so we, we took two shots wow. of tequila. Yeah. Were you wasted for that car ride? Uh, no. No, of yeah. course not. It was supposed to knock us out. Oh, you guys wanted to get knocked out clean? Yeah. Should have drank some cough syrup or something. Two shots isn't really a knockout ser- a serum. <laughs> for some people, it might be. Because, um, you know, you don't always drink all the time. For me, that Te- just stopped the shake. Tequila so. isn't tequila an upper? Uh, yes. yes. That's what they say. That's what they say. I don't think there's any scientific facts proven behind that, but everyone always likes to say tequila is a upper. Yes. <laughs> but I think people just say that because they want to drink tequila all night long. Yeah, they're like, tequila makes me crazy and make my clothes fall off because it's up the doo doo time. Mm, I'm so different. Okay, well, actually I actually have a question. Do different types of alcohol make you have a different drunk, or do you just be drunk like no matter what when you're drunk you're drunk there's no difference in the drunkness this was a debate this weekend wine oh wine makes you what wine i don't know just (laughs) far too horny oh wine makes you horny yeah just like just like all warm and fuzzy inside i think wine makes me emotional emotional i think is what i meant oh dumb (laughs) woman can't even get her Emotions, her right. emotions <laughs> ciphered horny is an emotion i would say <laughs> that's you how are you I, feeling today horny that's an emotion <laughs> that's an emotion that totally be an emotion yes horny. they should put that in inside out three horny yeah the, the yes. menopause <laughs> yes it's perfect that's right after puberty now all of a sudden horny's in the room this is getting <laughs> weird so yeah, you so it is emotional, horny's emotional, but is that the only alcohol like because we were talking about how tequila makes um some people my sister was saying tequila is just woo, she can't stop it. She's having fun, but then if she drinks vodka, she's angry. And then my auntie Val was like, "Oh, I'm so angry on vodka. I want to fight." But Uncle Tommy was like, "I'm just drunk no matter what." Mm. Yeah, people are different. I I don't think I've ever done the uh, science experiment of it all. I know. I guess I really only like what I like and drink what I like. So I think that's just what it is. I either drink vodka or a beer. Yeah. Tequila. Yeah. I think I have a pretty good time on tequila. I think I do too. When I'll be taking shots, maybe it is an upper. Or it's a placebo. Mm. Mm. But vodka, vodka, I don't even like vodka anymore. What? You don't even t- taste it? I don't know. I don't really like it. <laughs> I, I can only drink vodka because you don't taste it in a mixed drink. 
I like the taste of tasting it. I, I like tequila over vodka now because I like tasting the tequila rather than the burn of the vodka. The bo- vodka burns. Vodka burns. But I would never in a million years take a vodka shot, straight vodka shot. That's for crazy people. Warm. That's for crazy people. Why is it warm all of a sudden? Oh, my oh. God. It kind of, it's kind of bubbling. Oh, it's gross. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I want to know, are there any crazy people out there that when they go to the bar, they say, let me get a shot of Tito's, like just Tito's? Yeah, I need to know. I, bet. I need to know. I mean, there has to be, but that seems crazy. See, that's where I would pick. Yeah, don't do it. That's where I would pick tub. tequila over. Yeah. Mm, everyone's gagging right now. No, no one's probably going to be hungover on a Tuesday morning. Oh, yeah, it is Tuesday. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Today's Happy Monday Tuesday. while we record. So it I got is. a little confuzzled here. A little confuzzled, but not feeling hungover. And yeah, I guess all alcohol makes me feel the same. I don't think anything's really different. I think drunk is drunk. No yeah. wine horny for you. Emotional well, he, for me. You, you don't. Um, yeah, emotional. I think I'm. what I meant was emotional. Can we circle back? Oh, here? oh OK. Well, I was emotional. trying to give you. I was trying to give you horny is, emo- is an emotion. Yeah, no, I think I'm just emotional. OK. Yeah. <laughs> emotional. Yeah. Well, I think everyone can speak for wine saying it makes them feel a little bit emotional. Yeah. Yeah. All over the place. It makes you feel a little erratic. Yeah. It's erotic, like, well, what do mean? I do? Well, that's for you, buddy. <laughs> You're the horny girl. You're feeling very hero- erotic on your horny wine. Yeah. yeah. It's just horny juice. Yeah. You know, it is an aphrodisiac. It is what it is. Mm. I never yeah. feel it with them oysters, though. I'll, I'll go. I could go ban for ban on oysters and mm-hmm. not feel not feel that 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 warm fuzz you're supposed to feel. Yeah, I just don't even understand. What is it in oysters that makes you horny, supposedly? Let me look that up. Why do oysters make you horny? Or why don't oysters make Grace horny? <laughs> why don't they make Grace horny? <laughs> why do oysters... <laughs> just also says, looking for a new word for horny. I hate it. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, horned, maybe? No, just like a separate <laughs> word. <laughs> J- jazzed? Oysters oh, are that's, often yeah, that's my word. Oysters are often considered an aphrodisiac because they contain nutrients that may improve sexual performance, desire, or arousal. The nutrients that are included are zinc, diasporatic acid, and omega three fatty acids. So those three are going to make you horny slash jazzed. Okay. okay. All right. But they don't work for you. I I don't know if I believe in aphrodisiacs. You think it's just all in your head? Everything to me is a placebo. I don't know what I believe in. Yeah, I'm. I'll I'll eat a bunch of oysters, and instead of getting horny, I'll just get gout. Yeah, that's gross. So. Gout sounds way grosser than it is, though. Yeah, it is. It's it's literally fine. <laughs> but gout <laughs> sounds like your foot's falling off, and there's parasites coming out of your stomach. That's exactly what I thought it was. Right? Me too. I thought it was so disgusting, and then we looked it up, and it just means your belly hurts or something. Yeah, because all summer, my mom and my sister were just um they were. Drinking wine and having seafood, and apparently that gives you gout. But they didn't get gout, but they were like, we're going to get gout. <laughs> <laughs> and to me, I'm like, ew, oh my God, they're going to have parasites and maggots in their belly. Yeah, like gout sounds green. like the thing that like um, the, the Civil War men's legs are falling off and shit. Yeah, yeah. It seems very, <laughs> very old age in like the Black Plague. Like it's something terrible. It's awful. But it's not yeah. that bad. So if you have gout, good for you. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. You're going to be all right. Yeah, kids, kids, you're gonna be all right out there. Have you? Did, so you never got gout? No, no, can't say oh. I have. But you know, I don't really go to the doctor. So, still never got that cough checked. When's the last time you went to the doctor, pussy? Um, <laughs> want to have MRSA? Mm-hmm. You only go when you have to, right? Yeah, you have to. Your cough is gonna kill you. It doesn't kill you, makes you fucking stronger, kid. Mm. All right, all right, all right. All right. I just think you should get the cough checked out. I'm I so I just I just think you should get the cough checked out. But you know what? If you're not gonna, who fucking cares? Because like you said, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And if you're gonna die, you're gonna die. That's the way to look at it. Yeah, you're gonna. That's miss one way to look at, at life. Oh, <laughs> you say you're gonna miss <laughs> gout? You're gonna miss me at all? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll you're gonna miss, miss me when I'm gone. gone. <laughs> I am. I'll make a shrine of you. Yeah, you gotta do the cup song for me. Where should I do it? A couple shrines for you? No, a couple shrines and then the cup song. Oh, I'll do the cup song all funeral long. And this is my funeral outfit. It's perfect. I'll be right in the back and I'll be doing the cup song. And everyone's going to say, what's that fucking sound? But no one can see me. And everyone's like, this is so fucking annoying. It's just me doing the cup song saying this is what she wanted. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wasn't that your mother's request at her funeral? Yes, that's what I thought. Wow. 
That's insane. Does Peyton's mom still want the cup song at her funeral? I don't know, Pay. Yes, that's the only thing she really wants me to play the cup song at her funeral. And I have to, that's her eulogy. I'm going to eulogize her and I'm just going to wow. do the thing. It's that walking great right there. Thank you. Thank you. Can, we, can we ask why? Does she just love that movie, that song? What no, about it? She always would sing like, uh, she would always just be like, you're going to miss me when I die. So then that song came out. And then so she's like, you're oh, going to miss me moms. when I'm gone. <laughs> yeah, literally. It's fucking crazy. So now she just. And then I got really good at the cup song at right page of 13. Wow. And that was my first singing video, actually. Oh, perfect. So she, she just always has said that you have to perform that at my funeral. Wow. You get, well, you better hold your own. I'm going to. All right. You have to. Yeah. Kane's going to keep her promise. That's a PP. Can we invite. Can you invite us to the funeral? PP? Yeah. I, I okay. hope That's she doesn't have die for us to see. Maybe we could, you know, have a celebration of life for your mother. How about that? <laughs> well, I'm giving <laughs> her still 60. Alive. I'm giving her 60 more years. <laughs> oh, uh, <God. laughs> wow, that's beautiful. So yeah, I'll do that for you too, Grace. If that's really what you want. Traditions are what holidays are made about. This year, start a new tradition with Ibotta. Ibotta gives you cash back on all your purchases, so you can keep those holiday traditions alive, no matter how old or new. The average Ibotta user earns $256 per year. Think about how much extra holiday magic you can be making this season with more room in your budget. With Ibotta, you can earn cash back with whatever you withdraw from your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards. Simply add offers in the app, upload a receipt, and voila, the money is yours. You can save $200,000 dollars $400,000. Sorry. You can save on over 2,400 brands and shop at over 1,000 realtors, including your favorite grocery stores, Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners, you can get $5 just trying Ibotta by using the code PLANBREE when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app and start earning cash back and use code PLANBREE. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store, and use code Plan B. Speaking of mothers in the wor- in the letter P, uh, it's Peggy LaPaglia's birthday. Whoa, whoa, that's crazy. P, Peggy, <laughs> Peggy, Peggy, it's your birthday. <laughs> yeah, it's Peggy's birthday. Gotta go get some uh, Italian food for my mama's birthday. It's poured out. The poor lady got a, a rain shower for her birthday. Ah, poor lady. Poor lady. Oh, but she, maybe she loves it because she loves to swim. Oh, yeah. Yep, so she's swimming in the, she's just swimming in the earth right now. Perfect. Swimming perfect. in the earth. Swimming in the earth. She's just riding around in her car, swimming through life. It's perfect. Do you happen to know your mother's age? Yeah, I do, but a lady never reveals her age. Uh, I lost count. Like, I, I don't know if we talked about it on here or if I talked about it with somebody else, but for me personally, my mom stopped aging at a certain age. So in yeah. my head, she is literally 38 till the end of time. Oh, really? Yeah. It's crazy. She's 38 forever. <laughs> and my dad is 50. He stopped aging at 50. <laughs> it's you so mean, weird. You mean just like aging in like you stopped asking for her age? No, like in my head, that's what I think they are. Oh, forever. Like, like, like that's just like when I stopped like like that. I think that's when I stopped looking at them as a parent. Uh, and I think I think I'll give my mom 40. I think I think it's when I stopped looking at my mom as a parent and more as a friend. And ever since the friendship starts, they're I, stuck there. She's stuck. <laughs> she's stuck in her age. And that's like where I left her at. I kind of I kind of get that. I just feel like my parents have been 50 forever and they're 50 forever. Mm-hmm. And it's shocking when you find out they're not. And you're like, <gasps> what? Oh, what? How did we get all here? The time go. <laughs> Oh, you, that's a beautiful one for the funeral. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, it's very, no. It's dark. It's terrible. <laughs> it's dark. With all the time. What about the Menendez brothers, him just playing that crazy song at the fucking funeral? Oh, my God. What are your, what are your take? What's your take on the Menendez brothers? I love the gay one. Oh, my gosh. You love him? Do you think they yeah, should be? like the actor. Oh, he's adorable. I should know his name. And it's so funny because both of them, this is, okay, the Menendez brothers, I'm not touching that, I don't think. I don't know what the fuck. Everyone has so many crazy different, they shot their fucking parents in the head, okay? They shot their parents in the head. I understand. It doesn't matter. You can't kill people. You can't kill people. You can't shoot them in the head face blank, okay? And then just play, oh, Krabby Patty, let's use all the money. I don't care. You, we were talking about this this weekend. You shoot, you premeditated shoot 
your mommy in the face, your daddy in the face while they're on the couch and you think, woohoo, oh, that's because they were mean to us. They did bad stuff to us. You run away. You run away. Run away. You don't need to kill people. I think you should be in prison forever because you murder people. I think that's how the life works. You murder people, you stay in prison. If you think that's wrong, maybe we need to re we need to talk because murderers go to jail. Mm -hmm. I just, I just, your, your father, your father raping you. It's just a whole different thing that you just don't, you wouldn't understand. We both wouldn't he understand. No shit. Like, he deserves that guy deserves to die. Like, I probably would kill probably people. kill. I probably would kill. You can't kill people. You, you're you doing just as bad. You can't it's kill just, people. I don't know. It's just, it's <laughs> wild. It's just You wild. run away. Run away. Yeah. Get out of there. Go to college. Run away. I don't Do know. Burglary. Do burglary. Do burglary from your parents and run away. You can't kill people. I get it. I get it. You can't kill people. There's some people I could kill. I Hey, you know what? I don't know. Hire a hitman. Try to get away with it. They don't What's exist. What's your best bet? How do you know? Did you know that? I just How recently do found that out. Hitmen but don't really exist. But who's because, telling because, you that? Because, because. Who's telling you that? They will do sting operations, right? Mm -hmm. And the hitman will show up. And it'll be like their first time every time. And it's it's literally a sting operation. You could totally hire some guy for money to kill someone. Yeah. But like hit actual man. hitmen that do it for their job. Well, Brad Pitt is not real. <laughs> like that's like movie. That's that movie style. But I could I could go into Boston right now, find some guy that's looking for cash, and be like, if I give you a plan in twenty grand, can you kill somebody? And he'd be like, Yeah, he's gonna get caught. So are you. You're always yeah. gonna get caught. But I mean, there's some people out there willing to do anything. They could have they could have at least tried that. I don't know, or but run away. To be a hitman for a living, obsolete. Hey, maybe we don't know that because the good ones never get caught. True that, brother. <laughs> True that. They're just so good. They're just like in the wind. They don't. We, they don't even exist because no one's ever caught them. Fair. They're really good at that job. But I don't know. I don't know how you would find that guy. That's where I'm like, does do real people exist in the world where it's like, did you see the new George Clooney and Brad Pitt movie? No. It's them. It's kind of what we're talking about, sort of. It's like this number. The premise of this movie is something bad happens. You call this secret number and Brad Pitt and George Clooney are separately doing the same job, but they get called in for the same job and they like clean it up. They make bad things go away. So like someone Ooh. died and they have to make it go away. So like uh, that's not a hitman, but I think you could probably call them for that, too. I don't know. They seem like the guys for the job, but I'm watching it. And it's just like, yeah, there's no way this, there's just no way this could be a real profession because how do you get your number out there and who do you float it to? Like, yeah. how do you, how do you advertise that you're that guy? You just have to get involved in a, a ring of bad people. Yeah. I was going to say, you got to get involved with the ring of bad people. <laughs> and I'm just want to be, I just want to believe in the world and think that doesn't exist. But obviously that exists actually. Obviously, there's so yeah. many bad people. So Hitman's got to exist. Bad guys exist everywhere. Yeah, but like um, the the Joe Schmo that you can find on Craigslist is not real. Yeah, well, I mean, Sting. yeah, that yeah, I mean, if you're looking for a hitman on Craigslist, you deserve to go to prison. You're an idiot. Not all of us. <laughs> <laughs> who are you? Who are you looking to kill? Who are you looking to kill? I got a couple. <laughs> and what do you go like? What do you put in? It's just like little little words in there. Like <laughs> Imagine, you're trying to like five years from now that they, they have this as evidence that I killed someone. <laughs> I mean, God, they probably could. <laughs> That's actually crazy. <laughs> no, oh, I'm not man. looking to kill. I'm not looking to kill. I'm looking to stay the fucking farthest away from prison time, jail time, court systems. I don't want anything to do with any of that. I would. Ra I can't deal with that. You I'm still in the hole for that. What do you mean? I'm in the hole with uh, the jail system, the court system. I mean, why? Because your license? Because my license. Yeah, but you're not going to prison. I'm not going to prison, but the, once you're in there, it's you're hard to get out. You're not getting behind the wheel. You can't get behind the wheel. I mean, I did my time. <laughs> I did my time for my community service. For I got I got something on my record, underage drinking, 19 years old. You know, you live and you learn. You get better. You grow. You're not going to go to prison. Mm -hmm. I, there's one thing I think I know about both of us, and I really hope it's true. We're never going to go to prison. I'm really like, wow, why'd I say that? Because now I feel like we're going to go to prison next week. 
I'm not going to prison. We don't do anything prison worthy. <laughs> I'm just picturing all of this being used against me in a, a later time. And it's like, I'm not going to prison. It's TMZ with the fucking jail. Book. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's all I'm picturing. This is like on the news of us being like, we don't do anything prison worthy. <laughs> Somehow we killed like 14 people. It's going to be fucking awful. Oh, my God. No, we're not going to prison. I, no, I'd kill myself before I went to prison for killing someone because I, I couldn't, I literally wouldn't be able to live with myself. Yeah, I can't kill people and I'm not That's going to jail. just me being honest. I don't know. Is that bad? Like you wouldn't be able to live with yourself in prison? I wouldn't be able to live my, with myself for killing someone. Well, why are you killing? Who are you killing? Like, I don't know, a freak accident? All right, guys, quick commercial break for Ghost Energy. We love Ghost Energy. I personally can't stop drinking it. Like I say every single time, it's a sweet treat. It's 0% sugar. It's 200 milligrams of natural caffeine, so you don't feel jittery. You don't feel crazy. You just focus. You lock in. When it's time to lock in, when it's time to focus, when it's time to get things done, we get Ghost Energy out. And you're like, oh, my gosh, well, I don't know what flavor I want. doesn't matter because there's 15-plus delicious flavors to choose from. And we have a new delicious flavor. Okay, the new delicious flavor is Welch's Grape. It's a permanent flavor. It's not like one of those here for a little bit. It's here for good because it's that good. So it's a flavor match perfect to grape juice. It's literally insane. It tastes exactly like grape juice. If you're a grape girl, you're a grape guy, you're a grape they, them, then you're going to want this ghost energy. Okay. Gives them uh, juice box vibes. New York. Uh, I always do this new year's Eve sparkling grape juice memories. It's now in stores and it's here to stay. So I love ghost energy. My personal God. Yeah. My personal favorite is probably the um, blue Sour Patch Kid. I literally can't stop. I want to drink so many a day because like I said, it's my sweet treat and it just makes me feel electric. I'm locked in. I'm focused. I had a ghost energy right before this ad. Can you tell? I'm locked in. I'm loaded. I'm ready to go. So make sure to go try ghost energy now. It's in convenience stores. Oh, oh my God. I have a, a bad freak <laughs> accident that, yeah, you could go to prison for. And maybe this guy just panicked. Um, my cousin was on her way home from work on the shuttle bus this I'd like weekend. I'd say, sorry, real quick. Sorry if you're listening from jail. Well, what did you do? Depends. If you're murdering people, I'm not sorry. Sometimes they deserve it. Okay, let's go move on. Your cousin? Saw, mur saw murder, I guess. Whoa, really? So uh, she was riding Wait, the shuttle bus home. Riding the shuttle bus home and a car, there was a guy in a scooter in a car, hit the, hit the guy on the scooter. The guy went flying. The whole bus stopped and like everyone got off to help the dude but the car went just kept going hit and run oh god and she said it was not looking like it, it wasn't like a oh fell off and like hurt your leg type of hit like a bump off it was like a possibly could be a fatal crash and the guy just drove off oh my goodness so like that guy deserves to go to prison absolutely yeah you can't run away no but he must have already been on the run from something bad. Like, th there's no world where you don't stop if you hit someone unless you're already on the run. Right? Yeah. I, well, I don't. Uh, he panicked? panicked? Did he spin it, like, come back know. around? I never experienced that. Maybe he was drunk. But, like, you know, it was just broad daylight. Like, I just, the only way I, not I understand, but the only way I would see someone hitting and running is if they're already on the run from the law and they're just mm -hmm. bandits. They're like, well, let's just add that to the list of bad things I've done. God. Right? I couldn't imagine being that guy just constantly looking over your shoulder with bad karma. I am already feel like I'm getting framed for murder. Like, imagine actually doing it. Why am I feeling so tense about this conversation? Because... That's this what I'm is saying. like worse than politics right now for me. I don't Prison. know. I feel like what? I'm really digging myself a hole here. What do you mean? Are you admitting to crime? You're, we're I just talking done about crime. Exactly. I have no crime I've done. I have no crime besides actually I have a thirty-three dollar pay ticket. I got a ticket. I got to pay. I got it yesterday. Fuck. Don't forget. Can someone what did remind you do me for about that? Thirty-three dollars. What's oh, that crime? My crime was uh, I was thirty-three <laughs> minutes over the over my parking thing. My it's meter. A minute. A minute. And a dollar. P Town, I guess. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Reverse. <laughs> yep. Re they got me, but I was. It's okay. I, I mean, that's my fault. I'll pay the ticket. You yeah, know. No problem. I always pay my tickets. I. You gotta pay your tickets. I got you another gotta ticket. Pay your tickets. You gotta pay your tickets. Your license. But yep, if you don't pay your tickets, you actually could go to jail. Yeah. So pay your tickets, and don't kill people, and like just like try to stay out of jail. Like be mm -hmm. a good, just be a decent human. Don't do bad stuff.
Did you watch the Menendez this... Brothers? Yeah, I watched it all. And people are romanticizing it because they're so hot. And I think people are forgetting that it's murder. Yeah. And rape or sexual assault. And like, I don't know. To see edits of the... It just all feels a little icky to me. Yeah. Because I watched it and I'm like, oh, yeah. They're so cute. These boys are like... And I'm loving the show. And then I'm like, fuck, I gotta remember this is real. Yeah, these... um. The show, the show has a great storyline in the sense of, and I know it's like real life events, but the show has a great storyline in the sense that it sets you up to hate them, and then it brings you back and it makes you feel for them, and then again you remember that they murdered, and at the end you're like, oh well, they murdered. Yeah, I mean it's a phenomenally done show. That show is incredible. Yeah. But um, I think it's um confusing some people's emotions because they're horny for these boys in the show, and they're not remembering. Okay, so that's the fun part that I wanted to talk about. The boys okay. in the show. The yes. actors, the fellas. They I have a hilarious footprint, digital footprint. I've I I've been I tried to find the Lyle. Who's um who's the one who's the older brother? I can't get it right. Okay, well Nicholas Nicholas in real life is the older brother in the show. I found him and I looked for him. I looked for both of them, but I could only find Nicholas. Okay, so I don't know. What, uh, the, I think it's the older brother. The older brother is the shorter one. Yes. The older brother was a TikTok boy in like 2020. Yep. Did you uh-huh. have you seen it? And where he's like yeah. being all like, yeah, yeah, like trying to be cutesy TikTok boy. I can't believe that that's hilarious. And he's so hilarious because he's like acting to be an actor in all the interviews. Yeah. I think it's so funny. And then. The other one, the younger brother, he did a commercial for some some something in New York, like a like a doctor's office in New York, mm-hmm. and it's like three minutes long, and it's so hilarious and it's so crazy, and it was cracking me up. So they just blasted off beforehand. Yeah, they just have funny digital footprints. I don't know. Um, the the younger brother loves Charlie XCX and went to the Brat Show and brought the mom in. Um, fuck. I hate when I don't know people's names because I love her. Shit, she's iconic. What is her name? Chloe Sevigny? Sevigny the, is the mom. But oh, yeah. Hit, yeah, Chloe. Her and Cooper Koch is the younger brother or coach. Um, they went to Charlie XCX together and they absolutely blasted off. And she was in Charlie's music video. Yes, I was going to say that. Yeah. So uh, they're all awesome. Also, the dad. And, the show is so well done. They're all great actors. And I want to hang out with them actor wise they're just so cool yeah <laughs> they're so fun um she uh, chloe chloe is described as cunt yes and um it was really funny i was trying to explain um me and hannah Burner were trying to explain to whitney that like cunt is like a good thing and she's like yes. why why is cunt a good thing i don't understand like why do we have to make such a terrible word a great thing <laughs> i'm like well we're, we're, it was so funny because we like recorded an episode and it mm-hmm. was like three generations yeah, it was it was um like Woody's generation, Hannah's generation, and then like I like kind of fall into Gen Z a little bit. Nice. So it was like it was yeah. I'm gonna give myself that. I'm gonna give myself that. Nice. <laughs> but um, we were trying to explain like oh like that's cunt. And she's like, what do you mean that's cunt? Like, fuck off. <laughs> yeah, I'm like what the hell? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was funny. I think the gays definitely brought cunt back. Mm-hmm. 100 percent they absolutely i I see the thing about that's so crazy because it still can be used as such awful and such horrible and it's like wait do you mean that in a good way or a bad way yeah (laughs) i don't think the older generation will ever accept that whitney obviously because she knows things but like our parents trying to be like no cunt is a good thing they'll their skin will rip off of their bodies if they heard that (laughs) because it's so bad you remember hearing that word for the first time oh terrible I remember I was in a parking lot. We were driving home from, um, I will never forget. I was in the car with my mom and my dad. My dad said it. He was, he's someone that my whole family knows. He called this lady a cunt and my mom went, <gasps> and I went, cause I never heard the word before. My mom was like, you cannot say that in front of our daughter. And he was like, well, she is one. And then it was like a whole thing. And I was like, oh my God, that is the baddest, meanest word ever. And I was so scared of it forever. To never hear the word. And then your mom's reaction of, you cannot say that. You, you, you're you just like, oh, my God, that is a solidified, terrible word. Terrible. I was like, oh, that is the worst. That still, to me, is the worst bad word. Yeah, I'd say so. That's the worst bad word. Like I if- could think of another one. 
Okay. <laughs> totally. <laughs> that's a really bad word, too. <laughs> And whatever you thought like, of, that's I don't even the like one. making it. <laughs> whatever uh, you thought of. Oh God. Yeah. Like, I guess the, leave it ambiguous. Um, bad words. Bad words. I remember knowing that that was a terrible word, and then uh, when I was how old was I? Thir- Thirteen. I went to London with my aunt, and a mm-hmm. taxi driver called another taxi driver a cunt, and they both laughed. I'm like, how you doing, you? Like, how you doing, you fucking cunt? Oh God. And, and, it still and, sounds and, so and, bad to me. <laughs> and they, they were both like, ah, you. Cunt. That's <laughs> just different over there, man. It doesn't make any sense that it's so. How did that happen? Where it's so bad over here, and in Australia, it's bro. Yeah. Like I don't even. I do not understand what got lost in translation, or who I had it know. first. I wonder who had it first. Them, and then we just were like, we steal everything from everyone else, so we're gonna take it and make it bad. Yeah, of course. Hmm. Yeah. Imperialism. <laughs> it's perfect. There's a little uh, history w- lesson for you, kids. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a bad word. How did we get on that word? Oh, because Chloe is so kind. Mm-hmm, yes. Mm-hmm. And then you talk about with Whitney and Hannah, and uh, so what did what was the end of the conversation? Was Whitney in or out on it? No, she can't. She doesn't particularly care for that. Yeah, I don't yeah. think. Yeah, <laughs> she's like, just, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then she came out on on stage when we were in North Carolina, and she had the sparkly shirt. And I was like, Oh my god, that shirt's cunt. She's like, Stop. <laughs> Please give it up. I don't want to hear it. It's bad no, word. I, I think she was like, is it con? Like, I don't know. <laughs> That's funny. This is a Body Armor flashback moment segment presented by Body Armor. Okay, guys, here's a flashback. One time when we were kids, we went to Atlantic City and we were 16 and we had a lot of fun. We did. It was we really did. We fun. We had a lot of fun. And you know what we really could have used every morning because we drank a handle of vodka each <laughs> night? Is we could have used some body armor flash IV. We really could have because we were just, you know, we were just milking in we those hangovers until the, the boardwalk sun had set and we were out to play on the boardwalk with handles of vodka. And, you know, we were 16. So we were, um, you know, we we each were in, invited um, and we each brought a handle of vodka that was what we were told to bring and we each got it drank it each night four days four girls four we woke up we woke up and said flash forward to 10 years i wish this flash iv stuff existed flashback 10 years right now (laughs) so if you want to get your body armor today you can head on over to look your local 7-eleven and get your body armor sport water today so you were in uh, P-Town this weekend. Yeah, speaking of gays doing con, I was in Provincetown, which is the gay capital of Massachusetts, I would say. Of, I'd say of America. I mean, I would say that too, but I don't know if there's any gayer cities. It is just uh, the land of the free, and it is just everyone happy and so sweet and so awesome. And I, I've only ever been to P-Town for like the day. And my sister every year goes to Provincetown for her birthday and we get a house and uh, I stayed for the whole weekend. I want to fucking live there. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's the best place in the world. I haven't had that much fun in so long. It's just good, genuine laughs. You feel safe as a woman. It's really nice to feel safe and you can go to bars and not you can do whatever you want and like dance however you want and not feel like there's guys eyes on you being creepy or pervy or like it's just everyone there to literally have fun and not worry about anything it is my favorite place ever I've never spent a lot of time there but going out to bars only gay bars is the best thing in the world and I want to do that more in New York City that's where I want to go I think I, I feel better there I feel welcomed and I feel safe Oh my God! I've never felt so safe in a place in my life. <laughs> it's a it's a lovely feeling. That's how I felt at the, the at the Brat concert. Yeah, so it's lovely. It's just like oh, you just feel good, you know. No worries, no problems. You feel so electric, so good. It's awesome, and it was a like a it was a family weekend, and um the second day my it was probably the most insane thing ever. So we just kept we went like started out easy and we're like we're just gonna have a chill fun day obviously it always starts like that and you just start bar hopping and then you start getting drunker and drunker and it's like oh we'll just go here for one drink then we'll go take a little stroll but it just kept turning into a couple drinks here stroll to the next bar a couple drinks there there was no really like shopping in between or hanging out it was just where's the next drink turned into yeah. that it always um, starts with good intentions 
Yeah, like we got food and stuff and it was awesome. And it was sweet and it was cute. And then it was like, okay, I kind of want to hear some live music. Oh, I kind of want to participate in the live music. Oh, I kind of want to go to the club. Like it just elevates throughout the day, obviously, because you switch from, um, I don't know, like a beer to shots. Right when, it, right when the first Let's Do Shots comes out, that's when you know it's turning into an all-night party. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Once it's like shots, it's like, oh, the chill is gone. And that's okay. Exactly. My mom just said that last week. She was like... I almost asked if we should get shots, but then once you do shots, it's like mm, all downhill from there. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like once the shots come out, it's just a different, it's a whole different experience. And you can't control it because you're not just gonna get one shot. No, actually, the first night I only got one shot. Oh, and that was only because Tito straight up. Black. It was very bad. <laughs> yeah, can I get a straight up black Tito's? It was really, it was, it was yucky. But no, yeah, the shots weren't good, so I was like. I'm going to throw up and I don't want to throw up. I don't want to throw up. I'm going to save that for tomorrow. So the first night was actually, we all blasted off a little bit too hard. Uh, we ended up in the very dark basement and oh my gosh, it was awesome. No one was having fun in this bar. Everyone was sitting down on stools. No one was coming in. My whole family comes in. We start the fucking party. Oh my God. We got on the dance floor. We moved everything. We moved all the seats. We started a dance circle and slowly and surely we're like, wait, people are, people are really enjoying this. People are like, can I join a circle? We're like, yeah, obviously you can join the circle. And then we had the whole entire place in a circle. Everyone left the bar seats. Everyone came on the dance floor. Everyone's breaking down, busting, sweat everywhere. Shirts were off. It oh, was incredible. Yeah. It was incredible. And then we left and at, like all the people in the bar are following us out. We're like, oh, like we're, a parade. They're, they were like, where are you guys going? We want to stay with you guys. And we're like, <laughs> oh, we're going home. I'm sorry. And we went home and then we brought the party back to the house and we had karaoke night. <sighs> karaoke night what we keep saying is can't get away from me. it's like it just follows mm. it just follows <laughs> so thank god it ended that night for the karaoke in the house that was it it was over we went to bed pretty early went to bed like two wake up the next day oh man i'm hurting i'm hurting bad but it's time to go it's time to get it started so we hang out on the porch you know when you're just like stuck you're just like stuck in something we kept saying oh we're gonna get up we're gonna get up we sat on the oh, porch yeah for three hours saying who's gonna get in the shower first mm-hmm. who's gonna do it and we were just in rocking chairs like little old ladies people watching <laughs> and we couldn't get up and that i mean that and that's good in itself too no but that when was... you're in the moment you're like ah oh, dude we, we seriously should start getting start thinking about getting up <laughs> yeah and i'm like oh but this, this is so fun don't you guys love people watching and then someone cracks the first beverage you know, and it's like ah oh, okay let's it's time to go i mean we got we got going and then like i said it just progressed throughout the day of um you know what i felt like a dick for the first bar we went to it's like summer's over right but you're on the water what do you want when you're on the water i saw mudslides exactly you just want a mudslide the sun's shining you want a mudslide so we go and we go to the bar and i'm like mudslides guys everyone's like yeah come on it's mudslides it's like you're it's you're on the cape way to ease out of a hangover you know it is it's a I can't get over the fact that a mudslide will cure everything. It's a milkshake. It's a dessert. It fills you up and there's booze in it and it's just delicious. And it's like, wow, I want five mudslides before I can start drinking after a hangover. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. So everyone cured their mudslide hangover. But the bartender was so mad at us, Grace. And it was like a it was a very um, obvious mad. He's like, oh, mudslides, really? I thought summer was over. We're like, fuck. Um, well, is it better if we get more? It will make it easier so that you're not just making like one. And he was like, yeah, how about three? And we were like, ooh, we want six. And he made us feel really bad for ordering them. And, and we were like, oh, hopefully we don't start a trend. And then we walked away with our gorgeous mudslides. He warmed up to us. He was like, all right, whatever. I get it. I just don't want to make them. It's annoying. And um, I'm really good at making them, though. So you guys are going to enjoy them. <laughs> he was brat. He was cunt. Um, and then we started a trend. Everyone at the bar started going over and getting mudslides. Like we were like, martinis. Like, ah. once, once it starts, like, for a bartender, it's like the worst. It's like, oh, yeah. yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. But, um, you know. We had we had to get him. We tipped him well. And uh, thank you for the mudslides. And I think, you know what? I saw him smiling. And I think he was like, wow, people really like my mudslides. People are Summer's really back. Summer's <laughs> back. It was nice out. It was warm. Uh, so the mudslide started. The drink started flowing. Whatever. We go, we go. Uh, and then probably about fast forward seven hours, we um, end up at this crazy huge bar. And we start like playing pool. It's a drag show. There's like drag karaoke, which is awesome. You know, I've never been to a drag show. Well, I've that one at Sucker Punch, but that's it. I've never oh, been yeah. to one. Like I've never done a brag brunch, a I drag brunch. I guess I never brunch. have either. 
I know. I was begging for one. I really, really was so excited. But right when we got there, it was ending. Sadly. Oh, shoot. But it was open karaoke. And the hostess of the karaoke also sang her songs. And she was in drag. And she would like, she, it was her performance, but she would let p- other people come up and sing and stuff. Um, but my uh, Uncle T-Gun, let's say T-Gun came out to play. So T-Gun works about, I don't know, 11 hours a day, six hours a week. He is just always working this man does not stop he's a police officer he takes care of the community he's a detective actually so you know he's uh he's really out there doing it and when he lets loose he really wants to let loose so uh uh, that's a good preface yeah yeah so he works really hard and when he gets this is like a vacation right like we're all in the cape we got a house it's family time he's only there for one day he came in the second day drove in that day and uh my uncle wanted to have some fun (laughs) <laughs> so uh we're all we're all just like hanging out you know it, we were all pretty wasted because it's been a long day but it's just like chill vibes we're playing pool and all of a sudden tommy's like on the pool like rolled did a backwards roll over the pool table unannounced no one knew he was gonna do it tommy uh, I, did? yep and this is something tommy doesn't do tommy this doesn't not a tommy do move, that i will say tommy is a silent a silent a silent viber he's uh, a silent viber he's a silent viber you can see it in his face when he's having fun he's dancing he'll, he'll talk to you but he's not gonna roll over a pool table per se wow, wow so he uh <laughs> yeah he brought the vibe and it was not silent actually it was a silent roll he just rolled over <laughs> and um he didn't then, announce it or nothing <laughs> nope, just no one knew what he could do me and megan just looked we're like did that just happen and then he <laughs> stood up he turned his scally cat backwards oh. and he just he started moving and gripping like this so when the scally was backwards after the backwards roll we're like okay this is a t-gun we have never seen i'd like yes. to let the listeners know that this is shano's dad yep this is uh <laughs> shout out shano's dad shout out shano's dad and just like shano when they're drunk they get the shoulders going oh the shoulders were going um <laughs> we have never seen tommy like like ever this is the craziest we have ever seen uncle t-gun it was awesome. So he's vibing. He's having a great time. He keeps going on stage. Um, there's like a little elevated stage. And it was like a reunion. I ran into um, a bunch of people I knew at this bar. And they were having a bachelorette party. And it was like they were, they were singing um, Abing- all the Abington girls. Oh, no way. Yeah, it was so funny. I was like, what the, what the hell? We, <laughs> what the hell? It was awesome. They were so sweet. And they were having a bachelor party. So they kept going up and singing karaoke. So it was like a reunion. It was like, a, it was a, it was crazy. Everyone was there. And it felt like we were like just at a bar back home. And everyone's doing karaoke. And those girls that we knew that I was talking to were doing karaoke too. So Uncle Tommy was just like, and he really wanted to get in on the vibe. So he kept mm. going like onto the back of the stage and dancing. Yeah. And we were like, get- <laughs> like a backup dancer? Yeah. And we were like, Tommy can't can't go up there. Like we would get him down. And he's like, Why? Well, it's why? Well, it's fun. He's backwards scally. <laughs> and then the um the queen who is running the show, like she sits on the stage as well and she like m- moderates it. I don't know. She just like watches <laughs> it. And um she looks out for guys like Uncle Tommy, I would assume. Mm-hmm. And um she just kept saying, You cannot be on the stage if you are not performing. And he was not performing, but he thought he was performing. He was having just having so much fun. He had a glow stick and he was just like really hyping up the girls. <laughs> so he had a glow stick. The like glow foam like n- pool noodles, like the big ones that you have at Raves. Oh hell yeah. I don't know how he acquired one. And it was just insane. He was blasting off. He was having so much fun. But we kept taking him off stage, being like, you know, he can't we can't go up there, you can't go up there, you can't go up there if you're not performing. He's like, Okay, fine, that's whatever. And he's so he just sits front front row for the performances and he's like kinda like his knees are buckling a little. He's just like <laughs> vibing. And he's watching. He's like, this is awesome. But I need some old school music. Um, so they, they're singing a lot of Chapel Roan. And me and Megan are like, we got to get up there and sing Chapel Roan too. Because Chapel Roan is just, it was electric for karaoke. So electric. But they were singing all the electric songs. We were like, oh, we love casual. Let's sing casual. We thought it was going to be so electric, right? We thought it was going to be so electric. We brought the fucking house down, man. That's a slow song. Um, yeah. You know, you don't really know that until you listen to it. And you're singing it for a crowd that wants to jump. You know, when you sing it in the car, you scream it and it's awesome and it feels like it's going to be a good vibe. When you sing it on the stage after Pink Pony Club, it just doesn't measure up. So we really brought the house down with that. We had to do a lot of uh, dance work. Megan had to get on her knees. Uh, But (laughs) Uncle Tommy saw us up there and he was like, well, if they're up there, I can get up there. Mm. Um, So he gets back up. I have a a video. I'll insert it while we talk over. Uh, We probably can't 
play it because of the sound, but just I want you to watch. Um, so it's me and Megan going crazy up there. Uncle Tommy inserts himself. And Megan's on her knees. I see Uncle Tommy. I'm like dancing with him. I'm dancing with him. It's fun. And then you see the queen in the back get up. She can't stand Uncle Tommy. And I don't think she knows that he's like our family and it's okay. Like we we were welcoming, welcoming him on stage. Yeah. But her rule is like you, you're not allowed on stage if you're um, performing. We found out like after throughout the night. Mm -hmm. And um, Uncle Tommy's up there and I'm like arm in arm with him. We're dancing. We're dancing. And then you slowly like see him fade away. I think because he's just like his equilibrium's off. So he kind of like fell towards <laughs> the back. And then you can see the awesome lady that's running it like go towards him and be like get off and he's like he's just like i think he thinks they're dancing together at this oh, point no. i think it's he thinks the it's a party of the drug. and you just see me and megan doing our our performance bringing the house down and uh you slowly see him fade away and then you see her yell at him and then all of a sudden he's it's gone disappear -o. it's mm. the funniest video ever it's all caught on film and then afterwards we brought the house down and we were like damn i mean god we couldn't wait to get on that stage grace like it was a long list of people we were wait we couldn't wait the second yeah. we got up there and the song started we couldn't wait to get off we were like wow we fucked up with this song choice it was bad it was like johnny cash it was it was like it, it was just bad yeah so, no, um, it sounds like a hurt moment yeah, it was it was definitely it definitely was. <laughs> you so gotta, um, you just gotta you know you, you just gotta embrace it though. Oh, you watched the video. We're in. I mean, we couldn't. <laughs> we're really in. We're really locked in. But um, I don't I don't know if anyone else was. They were trying. The uh, the Abington girls shout out them. They were really trying to get behind us for this. Um, <laughs> but Uncle Tommy slips off. We get done. We get off. We're like, what? Where? Where did he go? Auntie Val, her her his beautiful wife had to um, beg the bouncer not to kick him out. Be like, ah, oh, no, that's family. He was just on, on <laughs> it with just, them. I'm because just picturing her going up to him going, La Familia! <laughs> it's the fa La Familia, it's the Familia! <laughs> and the bouncer was like, oh, okay, I didn't know that it was, uh, we thought he was just a random guy on stage, like, ruining their time. And I could totally see how it looks like that. I Backwards. could totally see how it looks like you know, that. It's a, it's a certain kind of person. And I know the guy. I know the yeah. guy that they're thinking of, that he is. Yeah. But he's not that guy. He's not that guy. He's not that guy. <laughs> he's never, like, this is the... I've never seen him have this much fun. So I'm like, oh, man, we can't kick him out for having fun with this family. And they were like, okay, we didn't know that. We're not going to kick him out. We thought he was, like, ruining everyone's time. <laughs> we were like, no, we're in on him. So uh, we, we, we're still hanging out, whatever. We're playing pool. And uh, we're watching more karaoke. And Uncle Tommy goes to put his leg up oh. on that stage again. Was he, and like, I, was he, like, tempting it? Like He was like, he was like I'm going to do it. And I'm like, Tommy. And I grab him. I go, no. And then... He slipped into a split, Grace. What? He slipped into a split, so he couldn't get his leg down. He slipped into a split. And oh, my goodness. <laughs> we, couldn't, we couldn't get him up from the split. Oh, my goodness. His shoe fell off. Oh. And I I have my uh, my cousin, my nephew, Cameron. And Cameron's trying to help him up. And Tommy just whispers to him, I, I broke my leg. And Cameron goes, <laughs> are you serious? Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> and and we get him up and we're like, all right, you know what? It's time to just fuck go home at this point. We're yeah. going home. We're bringing, or at least we're bringing, uh, we're bringing Uncle Scally back, back home. <laughs> Uncle Scally, that's his and name. <laughs> Uncle Scally and Auntie Val was was completely like coherent and everything, and we think she got a little bit of Stockholm syndrome because now all of a sudden we're all outside the bar. Neither of them can walk. Oh, they're like, no. and I say that with I say that with a grain of salt. Like they they're up and they're walking home, but it's like they're walking like swaying. the yellow brick road. Like it is like oh my gosh, what is the wind speed? Because it looks like they're getting blown over. And <laughs> yeah, there's I saw no a video wind. Of that. You can, we can probably put that in too. Yeah, yeah, and um, whatever they get home. And they're fine. They're just like hammered. And um, there's the stairs where we were sleeping. We were sleeping downstairs. were vertical like a ladder. So oh. these were going to be a problem. I knew for them going home, it was going to be a problem. But we sent them home with um, we sent them home with help. And we we went we said, OK, they're going home. We're going back out. This is the best <laughs> night of our lives. We got to go back to it. We got to go back out. So we get word that. um. Uncle Tommy <laughs> and Auntie Val made it downstairs and he made it to bed, but Auntie Val couldn't stop laughing so hard at the bottom of the stairs. She collapsed in Peter pants <laughs> and, <laughs> and she had to crawl to bed because she was laughing so hard. And I just am so happy that they blasted off so hard because they work so hard. and They just need that. You know, like when you're just itching for a blast off, oh, they yeah. were itching for it. And they, man, they, they scratched that itch and it was incredible. And it was, and then he wakes up the next morning. He's like, all right, I'm going to go home, have a roast beef dinner. And he just, no word, <laughs> nothing said about it. 
<laughs> it was a, it was so classic. It's like um, it's role reversal from when we were kids. We were uh, uh, all of us at their house when we were kids, falling yep. down the stairs to go to bed. <laughs> It goes back to what we said this couple episodes ago, our last episode. It's like full circle. Like now they're the kids again. Yeah. Like they're the crazy. kids and we're the ones. It's awesome. I love seeing it happen. We're, we're Brings... bringing them home. Yeah. Making sure they're all right. And then it's going awesome. back out. <laughs> yeah. And then being like, all right, we're out of here. And it's like tucking them in. Oh, it's classic. And then, um, yeah, so we stayed out and had a, had a shroom fest. And dude, okay, this is, this is where it got so hilarious. <laughs> All right, guys, quick commercial break. Super excited to even have this as an ad just because I love Aubrey Plaza so friggin' much. But um, you should check out the new movie, My Old Ass. It's starring Maisie Stella and Aubrey Plaza on the night of her 18th birthday while on mushrooms with their two best friends. Maisie Stella's character, Elliot, meets the 39-year-old self of her, played by Audrey Pl- Aubrey Plaza. This sounds like my trip to P-Town. Honestly, it sounds like exactly that. So this is perfect. I love it. I feel like I'm already living in it. When Elliot's older self begins giving unsolicited advice advice about what she should and shouldn't do in life, Elliot begins to realize that everything that used to make sense doesn't make sense anymore. So from the producers of Barbie and Saltburn, my old ass is coming of age story that uh, ponders the question, what would you do and what would you ask your older self? This is crazy because we kind of just talked about that. Uh, This would be perfect now going back in time and being like, hey, maybe I wouldn't do this uh, in Atlantic City when you're 16. Maybe don't hang out with old guys. You know, I think I would take my advice as an older person, but who knows? I got to watch the movie to find out. So don't miss my old ass written and directed by Megan Park, who is amazing and now playing in theaters, only in theaters. So you have to go out and go to the theater. Make it a fun night. Make it a movie night. Go see it. Bring your friends. Finally, like the bars were closing and they have a bunch of rickshaws there to drive you home. But it's a one province town is particularly like a, a pedicab. Oh, yeah. Okay. I've been calling a pedicab all weekend. Everyone was like, shut up. It's a rickshaw. Like everyone, even people on the, even the rickshaw guys were like, this is a rickshaw. All I'm right. Like, all right. <laughs> I'm like, am I crazy? I thought it was called a pedicab. I'm pretty sure. And I'm like, am I wrong? Cause I was like really ready to die on that hill. No. And maybe it can be called both things. I think it would be called both things. I've just never heard of rickshaw. I've thought, never I, heard of rickshaw. I thought that was a type of shot you take at the head. Yeah. I thought Ricochet. that's a prison. Those are prison words. I don't know. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> The rickshaws were out to play, and Provincetown is is not very big. It's like one big street where all the bars are on, and it's like a ten minute walk from the bars to our house. We're staying on the same street, so we're staying on Commercial Street where everything is. And we get into this. We it felt like we were in a movie or like a simulation because we get out of this bar, which was SpongeBob's bar. The floor is warped, and it's like you're literally in in the um fucking crusty crab. Yeah, I couldn't think of it. I was going to say the Patty Patty Krabby in the Krusty Krab. It's like a lobster trap. It's crazy. And there's all fishermen in there. It was really, it was insane. And Val, Val was so tired. She put her head down like this. And the guy came up to us and said, this is against the law and illegal. She has to wake up. We said, okay. He said, it's a Massachusetts law. No sleeping in bars. I said, okay, we're going to go. I think it's time for everyone to go I home. I think that's when it's time to call it. When, it, when I think they start it's time. putting the law against you. Yep, when you're going to go prison. So we get out there and um, <laughs> there's all the pedicabs or the rickshaws lined up. And there's a bride in her full, br- like her full humongo gown, like a ball gown bride. And she's getting in the rickshaw. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is crazy. This is beautiful. Like she said she looked like Cinderella. Was and she, by she herself? was um, She was with someone, but it didn't seem like the groom because he didn't have a suit on. I don't know. Scandal. Maybe. I don't know. Scandal. I was I was like, what the hell? And the, all the rickshaws were lined up behind her. And we get in one rickshaw to the left of this guy. And we get in. And he just keeps looking at the other rickshaw guys going. And we're like, what? So everyone's being silent. Everyone's silently like telekinesis talking to each other. And I, it got to the point where I go, okay, can you just tell us? Can you say something? Can we use our words? Because what is going on? Because he would go two feet, then look back at us and go, and then point it's like a mime show they were playing mime with us and i guess he was trying to say he really wanted to take us for the money but there's a line and he's like his buddy was like i was here first but they're not saying this so like the buddy was like those are my customers and he's like but they're in my pedicab but they're only doing it looking at each other like this saying and me and megan are going what the fuck is going on it was so you mentioned you're on shrooms at the time um to them no, no, no. Is that what you said to me just now? Oh, yes, 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 yes. So that will add confusion. 
that will add so much confusion. I'm like, what and are you doing? And then what we say, okay, about? we finally, we finally decoded it, and we said, okay, we're over there and keep in mind like it's not like a language barrier or anything like they're trying to tell us what to do they spoke fluent english because when we got off he was like yeah thank you that's what we needed like it was not (laughs) it wasn't like that so Hmm. we got into our pedicab our other two people are behind us in their pedicab and we're in it we're going it's um uh, probably from start to finish uh one minute and 55 second ride and we get home and he drives us he drops us off and he goes 150 bucks and we go, what the hell are you talking about? But in my head, I'm like, it's a good deal. It's crazy. So we start, we start, we start trying That's to talk him down. A second. Oh, it gets worse. So we start, we start trying to talk him down, and he's laughing at us this whole time. Like he, like he's smirking, and we're like, what the fuck? We're like, you're robbing us blind, man. So we start bartering. We're like, seventy. He's like. <laughs> And we're like, all right, fucking 75. And then we get we get our way down to 65 bucks for a minute and a half ride. And we're like, this is crazy, man. He goes, yeah, it's $15 a minute. I'm like, okay, first of all, or a second, something crazy. It was like insane. And I'm like, you guys are just loaded. So we, we have a whole barter fest in front of the house. And we think we end up on this great deal, this $65 deal. We're like, that was incredible. We worked all the way down from 150 to 60. It, it was hard work, but we got him there. And then... Uh, the other pedicab pulls up with our other two friends in it and they get off and me and Megan go, yeah, get ready to barter. Get ready. It's going to be a long <laughs> one. They go, what? We agreed on 20 bucks when we got in at the other end and they just walked off and we're like, it was 20 bucks. And me and Megan, big balls are standing there like, like smoking cigarettes. Get ready to barter. It's going to be hard. <laughs> <laughs> and Cam was just like, what? We get, you it was 20 bucks. Bam- bamboozled. We got bamboozled crazy. And we ended it thinking we got the best finest deal we bartered <laughs> so hard oh my god we're idiots we're idiots and then we get inside and man it was a baloney fest it was baloney this baloney that no i don't understand do you like baloney no particularly me either it was a baloney fest g an so absolute pe- baloney people fest. eating baloney or it was a bunch of baloney like bullshit oh. it was so much baloney in your mouth that you couldn't even breathe yep. okay was yep. this a game Nope, it was just uh one one guy, a lot of bologna sandwiches, and he, he was just making bologna sandwiches for everyone, trying to feed everyone. Ooh, yep. Bologna sandwiches is not. <laughs> it was actually it was actually pretty good in the moment, but um yeah, bologna. I woke up and said no more bologna, never again. I'm not eating bologna. What? Why did I eat so much bologna? <laughs> There's a thing about my cousins and they love bologna so much. It's like a household staple. They love bologna, and they're the only family I know that loves bologna. That's it's a crazy. bunch of bologna. Yeah, it was uh it was a bologna fest, and then man, uh we all woke up so sore. Like we can't believe how sore we are. Like we got like hit like hard and bruises it's it was just tommy did splits and did rolling over the pool <laughs> table or something he's the one that should wake up with bruises everyone else was was okay <laughs> <laughs> it, it was insane but it was a good family blast off and provincetown is awesome i want to go back every weekend it was yeah no dude that place is awesome I, i'm so glad you guys had a, a, a real good uh family family affair it was great it was great shout out val uh happy birthday happy birthday val Happy birthday. I love a good Val shout out. Val is Brianna's sister. And guess what? I got invited to the wedding. They're getting married in Lisbon. Portugal. Yeah. It's going to be absolutely delicious. Delicious? It's going to be I've delicious. I've never been to a wedding before. I'm all jazzed. I've only been to one ever. I'm so excited. Oh, yeah. I've been to, I yeah. went to my aunt's wedding, but it was, uh, I don't know. I was a kid. Yeah. Now it's like a wedding that we know the people, like actually know them and we love their love and we get to go across the world for it. So exciting. Destination wedding. Yeah. Wow. It's perfect. I want to go back to the bologna. I think it's funny that um, at the end of a trip, you'll just eat whatever's left. Oh, yeah. Bologna and grapes. It was bologna, grapes. Um, okay, well, here's another part of the night that was so... So we got back on the rickshaws, and we get inside, and we're so hungry. And we're... we're this is before the bologna got into play. We're so hungry. And we're like, 
fought, we're, we all changed into our comfies though, and we didn't want to really walk back down the street because we just rickshawed home. But we finally like came to a dis- group discussion. It was about a 10 minute discussion of we can do this, we can get up, we can go get pizza. We're all going to get up and walk and go get pizza. And we were really, really struggling with this decision. So we finally said, okay, we can do this. We got up to get the pizza. We walk out the front door. It was like heaven, Val. And Pat show up with a box of pizza immediately oh, wow. as we le- as we left the fucking door. It was like, wow, miracles are true That's and perfect. real. Oh my god, it was actually incredible. And, and on- it was a little shocking because we sent them. Remember, I told you Val fell sl- was falling asleep at the bar, so we sent them home first. Yeah. We sent them home so long ago. We thought they were in bed downstairs. <laughs> Turns out they met people on the street and they uh, they went to the dispensary and they had a whole other excursion and they came home with the pizza. But we in our heads were like, oh, we have to be quiet in the house because everyone's sleeping. And then we walk outside and they have the pizza and they brought the party. And then we <laughs> we loved the pizza so much, but we couldn't go back to wait for more. It was bologna time. Bologna time. It was Fair. bologna time. Yeah. <laughs> it was perfect. Um, but yeah, P-Town, love it. Shout out P-Town. I love you so much. And it's, everyone's so sweet there. How long were we there? Three days? Yes, three days. That's perfect. I think that's a perfect, perfect little getaway. Yeah, and I just only got one ticket, 33 bucks. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. That's like one mudslide. <laughs> Literally the price of one mudslide. So I'll pay 33 bucks for a lifelong memory. Hell yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> I love I love that that's her tradition to go there for her birthday. I know. It's perfect. Next year they want to do Nantucket. I said, oh, maybe we could get into Dave's place. I don't know. Ugh, don't even try. Guest house. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we'll see. No, dude, that whole story that you just told of it's your not family, went he would not put up with that. <laughs> That's true. But we did not. so good. We did so good at the house. Like, okay, we do sound like crazy animals and insane people, but we did so, we treated the house so well and like uh, did everything that the uh, owners asked for. They gave us $500 back because we were A plus students. So we wow. sound crazy, but we, we do take care of, we do we take care of things we're just a little fun yeah yeah oh, I've never but i've heard ne- of that that's cool i've never heard of that they were like you know what a plus stay 500 bucks back so cool wow so they didn't have to do that no they didn't but wow we just love that house oh man you would have loved the house too there's a front porch you could just watch everybody walk by people watching for days it was great oh, people watching there is the best too oh my gosh it's awesome i did say, it was leather weekend which i don't think i mentioned um oh, no. so skip that it was leather weekend, so it was a lot of people walking around in leashes and leather. And, uh, like, I saw a lot of boyfriends on leashes, which I was like, yes, do that. And <laughs> it, a lot of face masks, gag balls with leashes attached to it. It was great. I love that. Yeah, it was fun time. Leather weekend. So uh, check out P-Town. Go, go, go see yourself some leather. It was good. <laughs> good stuff. Uh, how was South Carolina or North Carolina or both? Both. I was at both. It was great. Um One funny story from it was, uh, so Whitney was in New York and we traveled together to South Carolina. And when we got off the plane, some guy came up to Whitney, was like, huge fan. Also, you left your computer on the plane. Oh my God, Whitney. So we ran back, (laughs) grabbed it. And I was like, oh, I'm just so glad it wasn't me, you know? (laughs) And so we get our bags. We're about to get in the car. And I hear an announcement throughout the whole airport. Um... Delta flight from New York. Uh, somebody left a notebook. Please come grab it. I'm like, fucking idiot. What idiot left a notebook? I'm like, this idiot. This idiot left a joke book. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my jokes. Oh, so my gosh. I was like, wait, it's my turn. That's my notebook. <laughs> and she was like, okay, go grab it. And so I went to go grab it. And I go to the Delta section. And mm-hmm. I'm like, hi, I'm, I'm the one uh, with the, the notebook. She goes, oh, yeah, I figured you might want this. You're pretty funny. She read it? She read my notebook. Well, maybe she was looking for a name. And yeah. It, is the first page, like, immediately jokes? Dude, and I ended up writing a bit about it because if you skim that notebook, it's all just concepts for jokes. Premises. So you s- sound schizophrenic. I look crazy. Yeah. I wrote. I was. I was working on one joke. Where did you see Garth Brooks is a bad guy? I did see that. Yeah. Here's the thing about Garth Brooks. Garth Brooks has an alter ego that's Australian rock star. So he released like rock music through this alter ego persona, Chris Gaines. 
Oh, I remember you telling me about this. It's the craziest thing. Garth Brooks is so crazy. I watched this documentary during, I think it came out like during COVID and I was just like, this guy's a fucking loser. All he does is cry. My parents used to like go and like make a weekend out of going to see him. They were like, yeah, they loved him. Groupies for him. And I was like, I fucking hate this guy. But I wrote a joke on the plane that said Garth Brooks didn't do anything wrong. So that just looks really bad. Oh, but God. The rest you of the joke Chris is that Gaines Garth Brooks did didn't it. do anything wrong. Chris Gaines did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my <laughs> but, God. It, yeah. So, I mean, if she saw that, that's pretty bad. There's like some parts of it where it just says, I'm not an alcoholic. Underline, underline, underline. <laughs> like. Uh, well, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. Maybe she didn't read it all. Yeah. But, but honestly, if I find that notebook and I see those, I'm intrigued. I'm oh like, my fuck. God. You know, I'm read. I'm going to be honest here because I would read it. I'd yeah, read no, it all. Totally. I would too. But I wouldn't say nothing. No, I'm keep, I'm taking that to the grave. But it was nice that she said I'm person. funny. But at the same time, I'm like, you just read my notebook. <laughs> yeah. You walk away with your tail between those legs because you're just like, like, there's no explaining. I, just, I was going, I went, uh, uh, thank you. And I ran off. <laughs> oh my God. Give me that. <laughs> Give me that back. That is not for anyone else's eyes. Nobody's well, supposed that's... to read that. It's all, mo- it's all, it all looks like a crazy person. Yeah, but that's okay. You know, you can't, you can't explain yourself to everyone. Yeah, that's true. But yeah. that was and funny. That's insane that you guys both left shit behind. You just I know. forgot your <laughs> I two know. most important things. <laughs> you guys are out. Were you guys taking shots on the on the flight too? No, no, completely sober. Just forgetful ladies. Yeah. Well, yeah. I really, thought that I'm, was funny. I'm very glad you got your notebook back. Thank you. Thank you. It's very uh, important. <laughs> uh, that's That would have been ins- fucking insane. I, w- I wish we could ask. I wish I just, I want to know what she thought about when she I, read it. I want to know what she read and yeah, how I, she felt. Yes. Maybe we should have her on the pod. <sighs> well, anyone at the, uh, fuck, I don't even know where we flew into. It's like, it's <laughs> you, ever, you ever travel so much and you're like, where, where the hell am I? <laughs> Every time. I never know where I am. It's literally <laughs> like, at this point, where are you? I don't where know. Where the hell am I? What the hell is going on? But, yeah, good for her. She got a, gl- a glimpse of uh, some untold jokes. Yeah. 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 Little, She's first to see it. A free trial, if you will. Yeah. Maybe she'll sign up. Maybe she'll follow you now. Yeah. Maybe. Mm-hmm. I just gain, just gain some... Uh, ac- well, no, she doesn't know my name. Ah. Uh, <laughs> eh, but well, she will. will. Yeah. Yeah. One day. She will. <laughs> Maybe she will now. Maybe when this comes out, she'll be like, that was me. I read the crazy lady's jokes. <laughs> yeah, I would love to find her. Oh, that would um, be awesome. But then uh, the shows were great and uh, really cool since we were in Carolina. And I think she would have done it anyways. But she, uh, Whitney, is donating all of the proceeds uh, and all the profits from the shows to Hurricane Relief. Which yeah, I, I saw really that. Cool. That's awesome. I also saw that she did donate to a couple scams first. Yeah. Prone she, to this- scamming. This seems to be, um, yeah, she seems to be prone to this or like very likely to be scammed because I was posting how I wanted to um, like adopt a kitten and she kept, she was like answering me about it and then she texted me um, a rescue or an adoption center or something and she immediately was like, this is real, it's not a scam. Because I know the scam stuff. I'm yeah. like, are you getting scammed all of the time, Whitney? Like, how do you... She's just falling for all of these, like, good good things that are all scams. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. It's she all... It's, this scam. It's awful. You're not a scam. You're buying. Um, but um, it's so crazy that people are using the hurricane to scam people. Fucked up. They need to go to prison with the Menendez brothers. It's, it's really crazy. Bad. I can't... I couldn't imagine... I couldn't imagine being that much of a a petty criminal mm. that's just like an evil criminal it's just it's just bad karma and they'll end up getting fucked in the long run it's just so shocking and then also i hope like did whitney say if they got caught or like did she like tell people like um i don't know no yeah that just, just happened so quickly wow well now all the proceeds are going to real yeah, she's doing to, her research. <laughs> to real um, real ones. I mean, every time you see a fund or an organization, as a regular person with a decent heart, you're going to assume it's real. Yeah. You don't think that you have to research, like, a fund. Of you're course. like, oh, 
this is real. It's going towards people that are fucking missing in a hurricane or lost their homes or lost mm-hmm. their lives. Like, you don't think that's going to be fake. So that's not on Whitney. No. That's on bad guy. That's on bad guy. And um, I don't know if you've seen, but like there's a, on TikTok that, that that same kind of scam is going on where people are saying like, we need money for our family. We need money for our family. We need money for our family. Well, Caroline Banowitz, she accidentally fell for that. She donated. And then they kept commenting, we still need money for our family. We still need money for our family. And at one point, her boyfriend had to pull her aside and just be like, hey, pretty sure that's a scam, girl. <laughs> and she was like, really? Oh. Like, yeah, man. Total oh. scam. Oh. It's tough. Yeah. I mean, you it's know, like you, you could, try to do good. You could fall for worse things. It's like, oh, well, my heart was in the right place. I did lose some of my money, but I was going to lose it anyways. Uh, hopefully, hopefully it ends up in the right place. I don't know. That sucks. Um, uh, the opposite of a scam. Uh, I saw that Caleb Presley raised a hundred thousand dollars. Yep, and it's still going, and the shirts are still available, and all the money still goes towards that fund for um, survivors of the of the hurricane. Yeah. So, links in Caleb's Instagram bio to get a shirt. And we'll put it. We'll put it in ours too. Yeah. So. Um, do that. And also on the subject of Caleb, I saw he starting a show with Drewski. You see cannot, that? Cannot cannot wait to watch that. That is, what, is it like a love show? It said it, it said could have been could have been love, right? It's could have been, yeah, been love. I think so. Yeah, I mean those two together, Caleb Presley and Drewski, are the most electric combination of people I could think of putting together. I mean, it's going to be laugh after laugh after laugh, I, bit after I, bit after bit. So excited for that! And like, they don't even need writers. Like they'll like because usually those shows have writers for their hosts. Yeah, they'll just riff. Yeah, they're totally gonna. That's gonna be out of the brains of those two. Yeah. Or at least I I don't know Drewski personally, but that Caleb Caleb is very hands on. So yeah. he's he would never let a writer come in and he's gonna do what he wants. <laughs> and I guess this is the Caleb portion of the show, but did you see that he also had um Joey Cavasso on Sunday Conversations and that was um like his hard launch of his boyfriend? Wait, didn't he have Joey Camasso on so long ago? But he also had him on again. And oh. it was a uh, it was a basketball player, and I don't I don't particularly know the basketball player's name, but they were like, "You look like this is a <laughs> this is a segment called you look like my friend Joey Kamasa's boyfriend." Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and they brought Joey and Billy on, and, he, and Billy was like, "Yeah, you you're literally like my brother, bro." <laughs> Wait, that's hilarious! It's I didn't so see that. Funny. Oh, I gotta check that out. That's it awesome. The best hard launch I've ever seen ever. Yeah, that's the hard. They haven't launched anything, really. Yeah, that was a big hard launch. Wow, I love the Caleb section of the show. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> keep this alive. Yeah, keep this alive. What did What did Caleb do this week? We should just have him. We should just text him at the end of every week. So, what did you do this week? And we'll just read Caleb's notes. <laughs> <laughs> keep him alive in the female in. in the female world. <laughs> oh, I love that. And we could have a Glenny. We could have Glenny Ball section too. Ball section balls glennie and caleb what are you up to ah oh, sunday conversation's great i gotta go check those clips out caleb's the best yeah and that and that's the end of the caleb segment thanks for watching for that <laughs> last week we had a jackie segment this week we have a caleb segment maybe we just pick a new person from barstool every single week i'm in okay who's next <laughs> uh big cat i know I, w- I personally want big cat okay, i want to yeah, know more big about cat. big cat i want to know more about big cat Dan I don't Katz. know. If, I don't know if you're going to be able to tell me more about him. <laughs> I don't know much. That's what I'm saying. We should research and learn about Big Cat. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, Big Cat. Or maybe Big Cat can tell us facts he wants people to know about him. Yeah. We'll have him yeah. on. Yeah. Um, sure. Or just relay it. What are you thinking? I think it's kind of funny if we'd say, hey, Dan, um, we just want you to have the best version of yourself out there on the internet what are 10 facts you would love for people to know about you okay great and it'll hit us with a hilarious list I who knows that. if they'll be true or false but <laughs> let's put it out there and let's paint big cat in the best light that he wants to be painted in that's beautiful that's a beautiful segment to just hey hey what do you want people to know about you here's 10 facts about this person that's fun it's the shining star of the week yeah yeah it's like yeah we give them a little gold sticker <laughs> Oh, perfect. Excited for that. Um, I think I have his number. I'll text him. <laughs> Ten facts. And then people were also saying that it would be funny if uh, that people wrote in their town drama for the week. Oh, I would love that. That's that a pretty funny great to segment. dive into. 
yeah, because we talked about or I talked about how being home is just more gossip and town drops like small town drama is bigger than the city drama because it's so involved and it's just like a circle of it. People just it's like telephone. Mm -hmm. So if you guys want to DM or comment your craziest town drama, we would love to dissect it. Yeah, that'd be good stuff, guys. That'd be really, really good. So town drama segment <laughs> after our shining star segment. <laughs> it's beautiful. Oh, we've also got um coming up we've got the uber one show we do it's sold out sold out in s mere seconds that's the that's the uber one way uber that's a boston way. way that's a boston way boston way thank you boston thank you boston we cannot wait to see you it's gonna be so fun it's gonna be a little different than our other live shows so you guys are in for a treat and we're also in for a treat because we've never done done one with uber one before yeah that's next week. Things are... I cannot believe oct it's October already. It's wild. It's moving very fast. Why does this part of the year move so fast? I don't know, because I really like this part, and I wish it would slow on down. I know. It, I, I do feel like this summer was the longest summer ever. It, it felt like, oh, it's never ending. It's awesome. I love this. It's never going to end. And then right when it gets to fall, okay, falls out the door. I just want it to slow down. Slow down. I know. I know. <sighs> we just have to grasp this moment. Oh, guess what? I'm going back to this weekend where i'm going back to atlantic city <gasps> oh my gosh is <laughs> the last we time you went children? when we were 16 yeah yeah oh my <laughs> gosh i hope it ends better than yeah the last no it time. totally will i'm not going to be giving a um I'm yeah <sighs> you're something not gonna bad be happened last time i was there that shaped it me was, as a woman it was really bad so do with that what you will. But and that that's won't not be happening happen this again. Because now no. I am a strong, independent woman who knows what she wants and will mm. not be settling for anything less or being coerced or forced into anything else. Yeah. Well, you know, when you're 16, you just don't really know anything. Mm. And when you're 16, girls, if you're 16 listening to this, um, or play this for your daughter, if you have a 16 year old daughter, when you're 16 and maybe your mom brings you to Atlantic City, maybe you girls shouldn't hang out with the divorced men at the bar. Maybe mm -hmm. you should go find other 16 year olds. Maybe you shouldn't hang around older men because that's really scary and wrong. And they will always take advantage of you because that's just what life is. And men are scary. So let's stay away because, you know, it sounds so fun and cool in the moment. But then when you grow up, you look back on those experiences scary and horrific. So stay away from older men and hang out with people your age. That's how life should be. Be a good 16-year-old. Not do what we did. You can still have fun. Stick with your no, age group. It's not your fault. <laughs> no. And we want to save you from them. We want to you know save you from it. I'm going to get off stage because I'm doing, I'm doing shows in D.C. and Atlantic City with Whitney this weekend. And yeah. I'm going to get off stage and I'm going to parole the beach. <laughs> to make sure yes, and like, yes. Nobody is... <laughs> Nobody Making is the doing same mistake. Wrong. No. <laughs> and don't go, do it. Go to the beach and I'm going to say, give me your IDs, both of you. <laughs> yep, you should. And don't do it because when your friend, if you're that friend that goes to the beach and does bad stuff, you give your other friends a heart attack and they have to. Hey, it's not my fault. No, I'm not saying it's your fault. I I'm have saying to don't go to therapy. hang out with older men because it, it's really, it's horrible for everyone because we thought Grace died. I thought Grace died and was kidnapped. And thank God she wasn't just other horrible things. But it's scary to look for your friend and think she's dead. Mm -hmm. It is. Oh. You did that for me, too. You, It's scary to look for your friend and think that they're dead. It's, it's the worst feeling in the world. So don't do bad Enough. stuff. <laughs> <Enough>. <laughs> just stay away. It. We have to call it off. <laughs> Atlantic City is scary. And I hope that it's beautiful now for you. Thank you. <laughs> Atlantic City. Atlantic City, wow! I'm gonna put 16. it all on seventeen black. It it's exactly every single time. It's exactly ten years, ten years ago, <sighs> ten years ago. Wow, ten years can make a big difference, though. It's gonna be so good. Stop. <laughs> I'm saying it for real. I'm trying to motivate you to have a great time. I will have a blast. I will have a blast. Oh, that's great. We'll have fun in Atlantic City. Thank you. No problem. All right, All right. You got anything else? <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye guys. End scene. <laughs>